Hi everyone, in this video we're going to briefly derive the formulas for the disk and washer method. I like to think of them as really the same method, so I call it the disk slash washer method. And there are some slight differences, but they are directly related. So the first thing you have to think about is consider a line. And if we draw a rectangle that looks like this, and we have to use our imagination here. So we're going to take this rectangle and we're going to spin it like this, about this axis. We're going to call this R, and we're going to call this W. And so when you spin this, pretend it's coming out of the screen. So if you rotate it, what you would get, looking at it from the perspective we are now, is the following, like this. So you're looking at a disk. So if you look at it sideways, it would look like this. So think of a penny. I always think of a penny when I'm thinking about this. Um, this is the edge of the penny right here. And this is the penny when you're looking at the heads or tail side of the penny. So this gives you a solid disk. This is a solid disk or like a penny. Right? It's a circle but it has like a thickness. Okay so the volume, the volume of this disk is going to be the area of the disk. So area of the disk times the width of the disk. So times the width of the disk the area times the width. And so we know some stuff because we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we know that this is kind of like a circle, right, if you think of this. And this is r because we said it was. <laughs> Works out conveniently. So this is pi r squared. And the width of the disk was w. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, let's translate this to actual functions of x. So now consider the following graph. So here we have the y-axis, and here we have the x-axis, so x and y. My y-axis was not intentionally crooked, that's just me. <laughs> so here's a, and here's b. And let's say we have a function here, it looks like this. Say this is, this is f of x right here, f of x, good stuff. And let's consider this region here, so this bounded region by the line x equals a and the line x equals b. And we're going to take this, this region here, and I'm going I'm to shade it in, uh, in blue. I'm going to take this region, and we're going to spin it across the x-axis. So we're going to rotate around the x-axis. So we're taking this area and we're going to rotate it about an axis. That's going to give us a, a three-dimensional solid and the goal is to use calculus to find the volume of that solid. So let's go ahead and draw our rectangle just like we did before. So here is our beautiful rectangle and I'll fill it in just like we did before. Except this time it's no longer R it's r of x because it will depend on where, the, where you draw the rectangle, right? The radius is a function, so it's really cool. So this length here, this length is r of x, right? Because it'll, it'll depend. You might get some little rectangles and some really tall rectangles, so it's a function of x. And we can call the width, let's call it delta x, before we called it w. So here, in this particular example, r of x is equal to f of x. This is the simplest case. And we're going to spin this about the x-axis. So rotate or let me use the word spin. By the way, um, the x-axis is called the axis of revolution. So wherever you rotate it, that's called your axis of revolution. So in the problems that follow, we'll be, we'll be spinning them um, in, in, you know, about different things, not necessarily just the x-axis. So when you spin this, what do you get? You'll get some, some 3D image. Let me attempt to draw it, I'll use a different color. So you'll get something like this. Something like that. Some type of like weird object like this. Right? Some type of 3D, some type of 3D object. And we'll find the volume of that object using calculus. So here's how. 
here's how. So let's translate this, translate what we had before to this. So if you look up here, we had pi r squared w. So for us now, it's going to be pi, it'll be r of x squared delta x. So we know that the volume, this is, by the way, this is the volume of our disk. So the volume of our solid, of, of this bad boy here, <laughs> funny looking shape, right? It's great. Uh, this is approximately equal to the finite sum, so the sum as i runs from 1 to n, of pi bracket r of x sub i squared, right? Because you have lots of little disks, right? You're adding up the volumes of a finite number of disks. And then, as calculus always tells us, we let n go to infinity. And so we have infinitely many volumes of infinitely many disks. And of course, we get an integral. So the volume is going to be equal to the integral from a to b. Let's not forget the pi. And then you end up with, with r of x squared dx. So that's the a rough derivation of what's called the disk method. This is called the disk disk method. In the videos that follow later on, I'll give you some tips to actually like compute the problems, uh, which are really really useful. This is considered to be very very difficult. Um, let's briefly talk about the washer method, and I'll explain what I'll explain the formula for that really briefly. So a washer. It's just a disk with a hole. So it's really just the disk method. Um, a lot of times people will ask, well, aren't you using the washer method? But it's, it's the same thing. So this is, this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. This is x. This is y. OK. So we need some functions here. Let's, let's call this f of x. And let's, let's put um, a line here, and we'll call this g of x. And maybe this is A, and maybe this is B here. Okay, so we're spinning this enclosed region. I'll use blue again. That seemed to work last time. We're spinning this uh, here again, around the x-axis again. The little, this little thing I draw here just tells you where you spin. It's a really convenient way to, to instead of writing rotate about x-axis, you can just do that, and it tells the reader where you're rotating it. Let's go ahead and draw our rectangle. So here's our little rectangle. And so let's see here. So this height here is f of x. And this little smaller height here is g of x. So the height that we want is the height of the rectangle. So this here, this yellow piece, it's top minus bottom. It's f of x minus g of x. Remember, when you have functions of x and you're finding heights of rectangles, it's top minus bottom. When you have functions of y, it's right minus left. So everything here is going to be the same. Here, you have your big R. So big R of x is your f. Okay. And little r of x, is our, it's called our inner radius. You can think of this as the inner radius. And you can think of this as the outer radius. This is outer radius. That's what people call it. And then people call this the inner radius. Because you have... Uh, two radiuses. Like when you spin this, you're, you're going to get washers, right? You're going to get lots of little washers uh, with a thickness. It's like a penny with a hole in it. That's that's pretty much what it is. You take a penny and you drill a hole right in the middle, and that's a washer. Or if you know about tools and stuff, like they sell washers at hardware stores. You know, you put a washer on a bolt. It's the same exact thing. So here, uh, what happens is you get the volume. And you do the whole thing like we did before, and you get the definite integral from a to b. And the formula has the pi. Let's not forget the pi. And it's big R of x squared minus little r of x squared dx. This is the formula. So in the previous uh, derivation, let me go back up and show you. Uh, there was a little r, but the little r was 0. So see, little r is non-existent. So little r of x in this formula is zero. So in theory, you're always using the washer method uh, if you want to think of it that way. Um, just a really quick tip. This is really important. This is extremely useful for actually doing the problems, which we'll do in another video. But 
big R of X, the way I like to think about this is uh, I was teaching a class once and someone raised their hand and they said, oh, so, so it's the full distance. Yeah, big R of X is the full distance from the top or from the, from the far end, from far end. Let me not say top because sometimes we have horizontal rectangles. So from far end of rectangle, this is extremely important to your axis of revolution. It's important to memorize this. If you can memorize this and you can write this down every time, you'll be able to do all of the problems every single time. If you don't, then, then you won't be able to. And then little r of x, this is the closer distance. It's like the baby distance. A common mistake people have is that they'll think that this piece here is big R of X. That's super wrong. It's the full distance. Let me just, let me just, I, I didn't say I was going to do an example, but let me just do a really quick picture here to show you. Let's say we have um, just the same picture again, something similar. Say we have this, and we're spinning it here. So we draw a rectangle here. So let's draw big R in this picture. So because we're spinning it here, so big R is the full distance. So it's this distance here. It's extremely, and then little r is this distance here. Okay, so big R is the distance from the far end to your axis of revolution. This video has already hit 11 minutes, uh, so I'll stop it here. In the videos that follow, you'll see uh, examples as well as other videos with tips on how to actually figure out your big R and your little r so that hopefully you can become a master at this. That's it.